Welcome back. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do two sample hypothesis testing. Remember, in the previous video, we learned how to do hypothesis t test um, with one sample. Um, in that uh, example, uh, we were testing the account, uh, accounting information system. And the department manager's claim was that if the new system uh, was giving us an account average value of $170 or more, we should adopt the new system. And we tested that um, our reject, we rejected based on our testing uh, with the data set we had, we rejected the null hypothesis because our peer value was 1% compared to the alpha value, which was 5%. And if p-value is less than your alpha value, you reject the null hypothesis, all right, in favor of alternative hypothesis. And alternative hypothesis is the new proposed system. Okay, um, and that was an example on a single sem uh, population information, right? So what if you would like to make an inference on two different populations? And if you have a data set, um, two different samples drawn from Popular, two different populations and how do we handle those kind of situations? So let's assume that um, you would like to compare the old system, you have the um, you know, data for the old system. Um, it, this can be a new machine, this can be a new uh, structured design of your process flow at, at your organization. Um, this can be a new tool, a new software, whatever you wanna call it. And let's assume that you are on the lookout for continuous improvement and you will be testing to see whether new things are improving your system or not. And in the previous case, in the one sample hypothesis testing case, we had the data for the only the new system and we had a certain benchmark. And by using one sample t-test, we were able to uh, you know, have a conclusion. Um, this conclusion could go either direction, either we reject the you know, null hypothesis in favor of the alternative one, or we fail to reject the null hypothesis, it means that there is not enough evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. Okay. So what happens? We do have the data set for the you know status quo and the alternative version, right? In that case, uh, we cannot really use one sample hypothesis testing. We should be using two sample hypothesis testing. And hopefully it will be a t-test as well. Well, nothing is going to be changing in terms of structuring your null and alternative hypothesis uh, uh, claims. Um, remember, we still have three different scenarios depending on what you put in, in alternative uh, hypothesis claim uh, in terms of symbols. Here you can have two-tailed t-tests if you have not equals to symbol in your alternative hypothesis test. Just to cover the entire set of possibilities, you have to put the other way around and the null hypothesis, or we do have a greater than t-test or less than t-test. Again, we label these based on what kind of um, symbol we use in the alternative hypothesis test. So what's going on here? So we do have, remember, we do have two different populations and we do have a sample from these two populations. And our claim is to see you know, how different these two populations are. Are they really different or uh, are they the same? Uh, are they, you know, being different is enough for us? In that case, uh, we use, you know, equals to and not equals to in, in our hypothesis test. Or are we claiming that one is greater or greater than or less than the other? In that case, we use one tailed uh, t test, right? Um, in this case, we do have population one mean referred to as uh, me one and population two mean referred to as me, me, me two, all right? And all we are, all we are doing is uh, taking a difference between me one and me two and um, checking it against a constant value. It doesn't have to be zero, by the way. It can be any constant number um, uh, in, in your hypothesis test. But in this case, we use zero because it is much easier to understand. So what does this first one tell us then? In the alternative hypothesis, we just basically say that mu one is not equals to mu two, is not equal to mu two. And th this means that the, the null hypothesis is the status quo, mu one is actually mu two, right? Equals to mu one is equal to mu two. Um, so if you look at the you know, verbal representation interpretation of the alternative hypothesis testing on this one, two-tailed t-test, 
basically is telling us that there is difference between mu1 and mu2. And in the null hypothesis, is claiming that there is no difference between mu1 and mu2, right? The, null, the status quo is null, and that is basically there is no difference between mu1 and mu2. Well, if you reject the null hypothesis, if our conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis here, meaning we reject that there is no difference between mu1 and mu2, we just know that there is a difference between mu1 and mu2, but which one is better, right? Um, is mu1 smaller than mu2 or mu2 is you know, greater than or smaller than mu1, which one is actually giving us the direction? And if that is something that you are after, then the two-tailed t-test with two samples uh, is not for you. Um, this first test is just going to check to see whether there's any difference between these two population parameters. Then you will have to use either this one or this one, right? Um, so for example, if you focus on one tail greater than test, um, then the alternative, the proposed alternative claim is telling us that mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero. If you just put mu2 on the right-hand side of the inequality, you just have mu1 greater than mu2, right? This alternative claims that mu1 is statistically greater than mu2. And if you reject the null hypothesis, again, if your p-value that you're going to run um, and you, you have the data, you run this on your mini tab, um, and then you obtain a p-value and that is less than your alpha value, then you reject the null hypothesis in favor of H1. In this case, you claim that mu1 is statistically greater than mu2, or mu1 is statistically less than mu2. The only difference between these two is just the sign, just the way that you structure them, all right? You can get one uh, from the other, right? Uh, as long as you, you know, keep your notation the same, um, you can get one from the other, um, obviously by just rotating the signs here, right? Um, okay, so let's see this in action. Um, we do have another uh, example, and this is more like an experiential learning activity. If I would be doing this analysis with you in class, I would just, you know, have you work on this and then I would be, you know, carefully answering your questions as we do it. But hopefully, you know, you do get the same exposure through this online settings. So in this example, let's assume that we do have a noodle company, I love noodles, um, and then they hired me as a consultant um, and they are interested in launching a new version of the website for online orders. Um, so they switch some colors, they change some colors and they change the layout of the main items. And they're trying to see whether this new system is much more efficient and cost-effective compared to the previous system, which is version A, okay? Version A is the status quo, version B is the new proposed system. Uh, and their IT gave me, let's assume that, you know, their IT system gave me two different data sets. So in the first one, their data is unpaired. I'm going to explain what paired data and unpaired data uh, is in a moment. But let's see that, you no, know, let's first look at the unpaired data. Basically contains 40 customers clicks on version A and other 40 customer clicks on version B. And it says that assume that equal range. So these two data sets, as we assume that they have equal range. And let's take a look at their um, unpaired data. All right, so we assume that you know, version A, they had collected 40 different customer clicks on the version A, all right? And we do have the number of clicks here. And version B, they had other 40 customers. Remember the customer IDs here, those are different. And um, they noted down the number of clicks on version B as well. Um, this is called uh, unpaid data because these customers are completely different customers than these customers, okay? This is one uh, data set that they provided me and let's see what else they did. And they gave me a paired data set and this data contains the number of clicks made by 40 selected customers who visited both version A and version B of their website. Um, and let's take a look at that one. You see that these are the same customers. They both visited version A and version B, and these are the number of clicks that they noted down, all right? Um, I hope the difference is clear here. Um, this is paid because um, these number of clicks are 
um, in your uh, example, um, maybe you are uh, having the same objects or same customers or same patients, for example, if you are working in a healthcare environment, doing the same thing uh, or in the two different versions, then it would be the you know, paired data. And the data will be unpaired if your objects or entities are completely, to, completely different entities or objects. Um, and sometimes it is hard to you know realize what's going on between unpaired data and paired data. Uh, uh, if that is your confusion, please check with me all the time. Um, let's go to our example. So the question here is, um, I'm requesting that you help me make the best decision for the company in both experiments. And the question is, is there any significant difference between the number of clicks on version A and versus version B? Why? And I'm asking you to use um, alpha probability of making top one error or level of significance as 0 0.05, 5%. And hopefully tell me what's going on. All right, so um, let's take a look at our data set. Let's start with the unpaired data. And let me open up my mini tab one more time and bring out my worksheet. Um, and then add a new worksheet here. I will name it as Noodle. Okay, well, I do have two different data sets. So this would be Noodle unpaired. Okay, and then I will have one more, and this will be Noodle Paired. Okay, so let me copy. Um, I'm not going to include version A versus version B, and I'm just start selecting these um, data unpaired observations starting from um, second row. All right, and I will paste them into the tab. And what I will do is um, I'm going to relabel these cells. And this is A, so it's A, and this is B. Um, this is much easier. Okay, so. Um, we are going to test to see if there is any statistical difference between this number of clicks versus this number of clicks. Um, let's do it in Minitab. So let's go to stat and basic statistics. We see that we do have two sample T and we do have paired T. So for the paired um, data, I'm going to be clicking on this paired T. But for now, since this data is unpaired, I'm going to click on two sample T tests. All right, so it says that, um, how is your data structured? Are both samples on, in one column? No, I do have each sample is in its own column. And my sample one here is number of clicks from A and number of clicks from B. Let's check out options. Um, so the question, if you go back to my question, right? And how should I structure my um, data, well, what is my claim? Um, what is my null hypothesis? What's my alternative uh, hypothesis here? Um, so it says that police have Dr. Gillick make the best decision for the company in both experiments one and two. Is there any significant difference between the number of clicks on version A and version B? Looks like I'm interested in to see if there's any difference between version A and version B, right? Um, so let's assume that I am checking for the case um, where, let me go on here. There is any um, difference between, what was I right here? Uh, let me get a, I am actually looking to see if there is any significant difference between two samples. So let's define um, uh, my alternative hypothesis and my null hypothesis. So before that, let's define the notation for the population average. Uh, let me A be the number of clicks made on version A and me B be the number of clicks made on version B. And since I'm testing to see um, 
if there's any significant difference between uh, two versions, I put it in my alternative, my claim, my proposal, and my status quo claims that there is no difference between the two versions, okay? So um, let's test this out, all right? So let's go to mini tab. Uh, my confidence interval, well, it, it, it tells you that you're looking at the difference between the sample, two sample means. So it's giving you in the options mini. Again, my confidence interval is one minus alpha, again, 5%, one minus 5% is not 5%, it stays same. Hypothesized difference here, I, I just use zero, so zero stays. And my alternative hypothesis is staying as not equals to, all right? And since the question tells me that I should assume equal range, I check this box. All right, so let's see if I can get some graphs. Yeah, I would like to look at individual value plot and box plot. And I hit enter. Let's take a look at the mini tab output here. So I correctly identified uh, my null hypothesis and my alternative hypothesis. It gives me statistics on my number of clicks on both versions. So it, this is the 95% confidence interval. It is minus 21.51 and minus 14.74. Again, this is number of clicks uh, made on version A minus number of clicks made on version B. Therefore, I see that um, number of clicks made on version B is larger than number of clicks made on version A because these numbers are negative. Um, but you know, we should definitely check out uh, the p-value uh, for a final um, conclusion. And the p-value here is almost zero, well, it's zero. Um, it's a very small number actually. Um, and it is certainly less than 0 0.05. Therefore we reject the null hypothesis claiming that um, there is not statistical significant difference between the two versions. Actually, there is a statistical difference between the two versions. And what is that? Um, with this structured, um, hypothesis test having not equals to on the alternative test is not really truly giving us, you know, which version is better unless we do have some virtual, um, you know, visual proof, like in this case. Um, so number of clicks made on A, if you look at the dot plot versus number of clicks made on B, you see that it is significantly larger here um, on version B and version B is, as it, as it turned out that the difference is significant, so it's like a significant based on the p-value and we should stick to the new version, okay? And these are the box plots. You see that the, the medium is significantly larger than the medium that we had um, from the status quo. Um, how do we actually modify this to get the, you know, uh, the proof that version A is, uh, version B is much better? Um, we have to modify the hypothesis test so we do that by going back to our definition. So this is a new test. Uh, the symbol is going to be different as you can see. Um, and the alternative hypothesis test, we do still look at the difference between version A and version B. Therefore, instead of making the claim that these two are uh, different, um, let's compare them. Let me modify my alternative hypothesis claiming that number of clicks that I get uh, from uh, version A minus version B is less than zero. If you put you know, um, mu B on the right side of this inequality, you see that the num you're claiming that the number of clicks you get from version B is larger than a version A, right? Um, and uh, if you look at the, the symbol on the null hypothesis, it is just the other way around, but whatever you put in, the alternative hypothesis, right? So let's test this version out um, in Minitab. So again, go to stats, um, basic statistic, two sample t-test. Um, everything is going to stay the same uh, here, but I'm going to change this to less than. I think that's what I did. Yeah, I have less than here. Um, and then I hit, Okay, and I hit okay. Um, so here it modified my um, hypothesis test correctly, and it still gives me the p-value of zero. 
in this case, uh, it is claiming that I should reject the null hypothesis. And what is my null hypothesis? I should reject this in favor of the alternative one. And since I am you know, in favor of the alternative version, it is basically claiming that the number of clicks that I get from version B is larger than the number of clicks that I get version A. Therefore, I should switch to the new website. And that should be my conclusion. And same visuals and same box plots. Um, okay, um, so this is how you handle unpaired data. Well, what if I had only um, you know the paired data? Uh, in that case, um, in that case, uh, things are going to change a little bit. Uh, let me copy the paired data from Excel and do the operations on it. I do have customer ID, click version A, click version B, I copy all these three columns and paste them into new tab. Not going to touch anything because those are correctly labeled. Let's go to again, stat, basic statistic, and pay t test this time. All right. Um, it says each sample is in a column. Yeah, they do have their own column. So sample one, I will select as version A and sample two as version B. Let's go to options. And um, again, the same thing here. Um, you could actually construct your alternative hypothesis with the pair data set as not equals to, um, but eventually, you know, you will have to check to see which one is going to be larger. Therefore, you know, I skip that part um, and then I just use, I'm just going to use the less than sign here. And this is going to claim that um, in the alternative hypothesis, that's the, it's going to claim that uh, although this data is paired, I'm still claiming that version B is actually giving me more number of clicks. Um, okay, so I will just update this to less than. I hit okay and I will go here and plot everything that I have. And I hit okay. And um, same statistics, uh, you know, version A versus version B. Um, and then I do look at my uh, uh, confidence interval 95% lower bound. Oh, well, this time it is upper bound as uh, minus 15.10. It is just giving me one bound because I do have one tail test. Um, and then I look at my p-value. P-value is less than 0 0.05. Therefore, I reject the null hypothesis. Even this paired uh, data is telling me that version B is actually giving me um, you know, better results, better number of clicks. Why do I see only you know, one histogram and one uh, dot plot here? is because um, this is the paired data. What Minitab does is it basically takes the difference between this column and this column, right? And it just looks at that difference uh, only, right? Since this is the paired observation, it looks at those two, right? And Minitab can handle um, missing values. So if you have missing values here and here, Minitab can handle that. Uh, and you might have more observations with one version than the other. Minitab can definitely handle that version as well. Uh, what I do have in the slides uh, that I did not show you um, is the normality test. Um, I did normality test on, uh, uh, on every version, um, uh, whether the data was paired or not paired. I ran the normality test and I verified that the data is coming from normal quality distribution. Well, in a nutshell, uh, this is going to be the end of our discussion of hypothesis testing. It's a powerful science that can be adopted to almost any field. And since we are working on continuous improvement, uh, if we ever need statistical evidence uh, to prove that the new proposed change is making things better, we will eventually have to do hypothesis testing. And in a nutshell, this is how it is done. Um, I do have some book suggestions if you would like to you know, dig further down into 
A B testing or in general um, how uh, these experiments are set up. These are the two great books that you know I suggest you to read. Um, and don't remember um, whenever you do whatever you do uh, in terms of hypothesis testing. If you're trying to decide, you look at the p-value. If the p-value is less than your alpha, then you have the proof to reject the status quo to go with uh, in, in, in favor of the proposed change or the alternative hypothesis test. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know.